Radio Day with the station that thinks local because it is local and proud of it. Yes, it is Local Radio Day and you're listening to 6TR Breakfast with Dan and Chris. Uh, it is uh, 8.38 in the AM on the 26th of May 2017 and I am proud to say and, and thankful to say uh, that we're joined on the phone by an absolute legend of the media, uh, Mr Chris Tarrant. Chris, thank you very much for joining me. Dan, good morning. Have you any idea what that record's all about? I must have played that a thousand times and I have no idea what the band's talking about. Uh, still Why no do idea. Need a bosom? Why do we need a bosom for a pillow? Uh, it, 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 there could be a number of things that you could use it for, and a pillow is, is, is obviously the top of their list. I think that's what they're going for. Yeah, and a <laughs> brim full of Asher on the 45. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice tune, but I, just, I was just listening to it. I played it loads of times, and I just thought, I have no idea what this record's on about. But... <laughs> It's, it's nice. It's, 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 it's one of those songs where you have to come up with the with a story yourself. I feel it's one of those. Yeah. Where, just just come up with the backstory yourself. Chris, thank you very much for joining me this morning. Uh, My I, pleasure. I, I said just while the song was playing. I'm sorry for getting up, and you went. I got up early for 20 years, so it's fine. It's okay. It's all right. I get up all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, I like mornings. I enjoy. I enjoy them. I actually. I mean, I don't get up and do radio anymore. You know, first thing in the morning. But I did it for a long time. Um, I just like. I mean, like with the weather as nice as this, I just like being up and about. I, you know, I get a load of work done. That's the, the That's best good. thing to do. The best thing to do in the morning is get is get loads of words. It's, it's a nice time of day. It's a nice yeah. It's a nice time of day, and nobody bothers you and stuff. It's good. It, it's perfect. So it is local radio day, and you you did um, so so you you started off on on Tiz was on on television, then you moved to to, uh, to radio. Was that always something you wanted to to do? No, um, I've always just kind of drifted. I mean, I never ever wanted to do television. I didn't really understand it. I sort of drifted into that for twelve months, and then I did about. I don't know, eight eight years or seven or eight years or whatever of TV, and I, I don't know. I just I did an interview a bit like this on some local radio station in Coventry, and this guy said, "Oh, that was really good fun," you know. And then the guys at Capital rang my agent up and said, "Would Chris be interested in doing radio?" And I was saying, "No, nah, not really. I don't understand radio," you know. And then I went and did a pilot, and I just talked a lot of old nonsense and sort of played Pink Floyd and stuff. And I thought, "Well, that's a very nice way of earning a living." <laughs> um, and I did, you know, I did a year on Sunday lunchtime and stuff for Capital. I, I quite enjoyed it, and it, it just grew and grew and grew, and in the end, I mean, I absolutely love radio. So, so it, it did grow and grow and grow. So it started off, you, you did, you, was it Sunday lunchtime that you did? So so Sunday afternoon? We called it, rather catchily, we called it Lundy Sunchtime. Uh, uh, excellent. Must have, taken, must have taken us all the 15 seconds to think that one out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then, say, I, though. then they switched me, to, well, they switched me to breakfast, and I sort of said, Oh, I can't keep this up, you know, getting out of bed at five o'clock. I may do two years, and in the end, I did 17. And in the end, I only really left because, you know, I was doing millionaire every night and breakfast every morning. I was just exhausted. But I, I still think, probably looking back, the radio was the best fun I ever had. I loved it. And I like radio. I like listening to all the different, you know, DJs like you, music stations, sports stations, talk sports stations, talk stations. I just love radio. I just... I just like the people, you know. Do you have any tips? And the for variety, people? you know. Do you have any tips for people who the want to get into radio? It's huge now, isn't it? Hey, do you have any tips for people who want to get into radio? So, uh, so people who, who think about it as a career. I tell you what. I mean, we used to occasionally advertise at Capital there'd be a vacancy or something, and in the main, the standard of the tapes that arrived was absolutely awful. I mean, real, you know, very poor quality and stuff. If you're going to, you must make, it sounds really naff, but, but it's true, you must make the best possible tape you can. It's no good, you know, sending in some grubby old tape that's sort of, you know, half worked out on the back of your phone or whatever. You've really got, you've got to be at your best. And, you know, so when you do what you think is the best possible show you can do as a demonstration, you've got to put it on the best possible tape. It might mean going down to some local studio and, and, and paying for something. It won't be expensive, but it makes a hell of a difference. Because if the, if the quality is really bad, even if you're good, most producers are just going to throw it away. And then when you've done that, I'm afraid you then have to just, you have to, you have to prepare for an awful lot of, you know, disappointment and rejection. Um, and, but, but if you pester, 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 uh, and send it to enough people and actually believe in your own talent, and if you have talent, if you're good, you will actually succeed. I mean, it sounds very silly, but that's exactly how I started. When I did telly, I just wrote this dreadful letter to every television company in Britain. Um, and most of them had the good sense to throw it in the waste paper bin. But two of them, one in Yorkshire and one in the Midlands, um, 
sort of got me out for an interview to see what sort of weirdo wrote this bizarre letter. Um, and they both offered me a job. I and mean, I started at ATV, and I was a newsreader, then I started doing Tiswas. But my life came from just really pestering people, you know. But you have to expect a lot of disappointment. So, so that's a key part of it, pestering people and obviously expecting the, the yeah. no's to come with, with when, the, that you inevitable get a, yes. You know, even if you're the next, you know, Terry Wogan, bless him, or whatever, you will get a lot of no's. Um, but it is a huge market now. When I started, there were so many miles less television outlets and miles less radio stations. When, when I joined Capital, I think we're, there were only about six stations in London, and there's about 40 now, and that's happening all over the UK. You know, every, every city has got more and more stations, which does mean, you know, there's room for more and more people. Maybe, maybe room for you to come back on, Chris. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm fine, thank you, Dan. Are now, you sure? I, the trouble with radio, you have to kind of commit to a station for quite a length of time, and these days, I mean, I don't work anything like as hard as I used to. I have a great life. I have a really nice, you know, couple of homes. and I've got a whole army of kids. Uh, and I go off filming and stuff, you know, which I enjoy. So I can't really commit. I do the odd sort of radio special or something, but I couldn't, I could not give anybody a year of my time anymore. I don't think I'd want to, to be honest. When I you- kind of had the best of it. When you started right at the beginning, when you, when you mentioned, obviously, sending letters to television companies and, and then you moved on to the yeah. radio, did you ever, uh, in, in your mind, kind of expect that you would, or obviously, or did you, did you know you wanted to, to push it on to what you were, you, you went on to, to, obviously, who wants to be a millionaire, and then now you're doing, like you mentioned, you're doing, you're doing loads of other different programs. Did you, did you have that in mind, or was it, let's see what happens no. on this letter? No, I'm, I'm terrible. I mean, I mean I, yeah, I have been, you know, actually surprisingly successful, but... I am so laid back and, you know, unambitious, really. I just, I've just sort of drifted from one thing to another. But, I mean, particularly with radio, it's like, oh, I'll give this a couple of years. This seems like a good laugh. And, like, you know, I was at Capital for 20 years of my life. Um, I, I don't know. You don't, you don't ever expect things like that. You, you would never expect Millionaire to happen. You would never expect, you know, the Capital Breakfast Show to, to be as huge as it became. It, it just kind of dominated London for, you know, so many years. I think at one point the Capital Breakfast Show had uh, as many listeners as all the other stations put together. Which is kind of madness. It's like it's only a guy talking rubbish and playing records, but <laughs> it seemed to catch on, you know. So no, I never really, I could never have dreamed it would be as successful as it all became. But you know, I'm doing stuff now, I and mean, I'm I'm actually leaving in in about forty. Hours. I'm going to the Sahara Desert filming. Um, wow. Yeah, I'm not so sure. It's 44 <laughs> degrees today where I'm going. Oh. So I thought. Do I really want to do this? <laughs> but, you know, I have, I have a great time. I like working with the crews. I like the guys, you know. Did, did you, um, when, you start, when you started The Breakfast Show, did you expect your voice to be one of the most uh, iconic voices? And now, obviously, one of the, people try your, your, your voice uh, quite a lot. I think I heard you on another radio yeah. station. And they do, do, you, do you get yeah. people coming up to you all the time and go, I can do your voice. Do you ever get that? I know. I know. Oh, on the phone. It, what is it? It's 10 to 10. I've already had two phone of friends already this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've been told that to try and slip in some jokes. I've done that show for three years, you know. Hello, Chris. <laughs> Phone a friend. And they, oh, no. <laughs> the ones I love are, are people who don't quite get it, and they come up and say, hello, Chris. Phone the audience. You go, yeah, right. <laughs> so How just, would that work? Just come up with their own, with their own uh, catchphrases as part of yeah. it. Um, it, it back to I radio. don't mind it. It's, it's part and parcel of, it's you part know, and parcel, what, so, of, of, of who I am and stuff. I'm proud of it, you know. Uh, and you should be. You definitely should be. Um, but back to yeah. back to radio uh, very, very quickly. Um, your son is now uh, a radio presenter as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's not very good, though. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, he is... The really irritating thing is... Uh, and he's doing a bit of TV as well. He's actually very good. And all these years of his father saying... Oh, Toby, you'll never, you'll never master the great art of broadcasting like your father. He's done it like, he's taken to it like a duck to water. Does he, he really, always, and he loves it, he really enjoys it, you know. Does he always come to you for tips? Is he like, do I do it this Not way really. or do we plan it? No, he no, just does I it his own way. No, we, we sort of chew the fat about it quite often. Like, you know, um, I, he, in the end, he's got to do his own thing and he, and he does it really well. But I suppose when he started, I did give him a, sort of, a certain amount of uh, advice. Even things like, Oh, I don't know. You're like, you know, just telling him actually to slow down. He was talking, he was talking faster than me. Um, <laughs> but it was almost kind of incomprehensible when he started because he had so much energy and he was so excited. Um, so I've kind of helped him in that way. But and I, when he first did some TV, I sort of, I did give him quite a lot of advice, actually, some of which he took on board. Um, he's just good. He just liked. But he's, I mean, you know, you, you just, 
you don't like getting out of bed, but once you're there, it's a real buzz, you know? Yeah, it's... And it's you want, I mean, well, breakfast, you want to be the first to tell people things, so you, you won't believe what's happened overnight, you know? This week, tragically, it's all the stuff, you won't believe what's happened in Manchester, you know, since you all went to sleep. Um, and it can be silly things, it can be very, very heavy things like that, but, but there is a real joy in being the first to tell your audience. There's sometimes the first voice people hear in the morning as well, which is, yeah. is, is the weirdest thing Absolutely. to get your head around. Uh, just, just one more Absolutely. final thing, obviously, just, just before we finish, um, could you give just, yeah, just, on. just one final tip or uh, just a bit, of, a bit of advice for, for young listeners who will be listening right now who want to get into radio uh, at this present time? Be yourself. Don't try and be like anybody else. The best radio broadcasters are completely individual people. They don't try and copy anybody else. Just use your own natural talent. From the shops to the parks, the places and the people. We're celebrating our local community. This is Local Radio Day with Six Towns Radio.